What comes to mind when you think of the best laptop? Do you think of speed? Do you think of design? What about practicality? A great display? Long lasting battery? For me, one laptop comes to mind. The 14 inch MacBook Pro. I'm Upwards and welcome to my one year review of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So I've been using the 14 inch MacBook Pro for over a year at this stage. And now it's time for another review to take a look at what makes the 14 inch MacBook Pro stand out. Let's start with the most important part of any laptop, performance. The MacBook Pro I have been using has the M1 Pro chip with 16 gigabytes of RAM, eight CPU cores and 14 GPU cores. And honestly, this thing is so underrated. It is incredibly powerful and capable, even to the point where it feels like it's a desktop PC. It really is that good. Just take a look at how it handles music production. The last project I will be testing is a piece I made for the soundtrack of a game my friend made called Lone Wolf World War II. This piece incorporates more than 30 orchestral VSTs and intense pads which are super taxing on the CPU. The amount of tracks is almost 100 as well. The MacBook Pro handles it very well, and as you can see from the performance meters, that it isn't even reaching 70%. And just for fun, here's how that same project runs with every single app open in my dock, including Final Cut Pro. It's pretty clear the performance is very capable on the MacBook Pro, not to mention that the laptop is only warm and the fan isn't even turned on. It's truly impressive what the MacBook Pro can do. If you're looking for performance, the MacBook Pro has proved itself to be one of the top performers for music production as well as minimal fan noise and heat. The Air one Pro chip effortlessly runs multiple heavy software instruments, plugins and effects without breaking a sweat. To try and make it even work even harder, 
Running several apps in the background doesn't even make a difference. When we move into video editing, the same stays the true. Editing 4K, 8K, and everything in between is a breeze, taking everything you throw at it. Just take a look at how it handles 8K red raw footage. But that's not all you get with the M1 Pro chip. Traditionally, with higher performance chips comes heat, and with heat comes noise. However, this is not the case with the M1 Pro chip. I can count on my fingers how many times the fan is actually turned on. It's 99% of the time silent, with not a single sign that's even working hard. In fact, it's made me underestimate how much silence is appreciated. As soon as I go back to another laptop, the fan noise that starts up always distracts me. No fan noise is an underrated quality. For someone who's heavily involved in music production that involves recording vocals and instruments, having no fan noise is such a welcome benefit of the M1 Pro chip. Outside of creative work, the M1 chip makes light of everyday tasks. Launching apps, multitasking, and leaving hundreds of tabs open is no problem. I happen to be one of those people who like to be disorganized and leave everything open. Luckily for me, there's no reason to not close anything. I almost never have to worry about my CPU being used up and my laptop slowing down. Even when I have over 50 tabs open, Spotify open, Logic Pro open, and Visual Studio Code all running at the same time. The M1 Pro chip never blinks or hesitates. It just goes. This also applies to how it manages the RAM. Because it is a system on a chip, the RAM is unified as Apple calls it. Basically, it allows for ultra-fast memory management and optimization, allowing the chip to stretch its legs and let the user take advantage. For someone who uses two Pro apps at the same time, I've never actually thought that I needed more RAM. 16GB covers everything I do, no matter the intensity. Looking at the outside, the MacBook Pro's design has evolved a bit from the last generation's design. It still looks super minimal and clean, but the tapered sides and lid are all gone. With a much more square and straight chassis, it simply looks great. Apple always nails their designs, and this is no different. But design is useless unless it's practical, and this is where Apple finally nailed it. Well, in a sense, they just listened to what the creatives wanted. A bigger chassis and ports? For the longest time, Apple decided to go form over function. But now that has been reversed. The 14-inch MacBook Pro is by all means a thick laptop, but Apple has engineered it in a way that it does not feel clunky or heavy. In fact, it doesn't feel too different to carry when compared to a 13-inch MacBook Pro. What makes the 14-inch MacBook Pro practical is the fact that it is a powerhouse that can be taken anywhere. It's powerful enough and big enough to hold a long-lasting battery and provide enough airflow that it won't burn your legs while using them. It truly is a portable power machine. Taking to school or all over the house, the 14-inch MacBook Pro is super practical, making it easy to get work done anywhere. Along with these design changes comes the revival of ports. Apple finally listened and put an HDMI and SD card reader back into the MacBook Pro. The two most essential ports anybody in the creative field needs. Taking your MacBook out for a filming day or photo shoot day no longer requires stupid dongles and you no longer have to search for one just to connect to your TV. Moving to the display, the 14-inch MacBook Pro comes with a 14.2-inch mini-LED 3.5K Retina display, and it is simply stunning. It looks absolutely amazing, and it is about the perfect display you could ever find in a laptop. Apart from the notch staring at you, the bezels have been slimmed down, and the rounded corners look very futuristic. But that mini-LED display is the biggest part of this laptop, covering almost the whole color spectrum along with amazing contrast, this display fits about every line of work you do, even HDR photo and video editing. This display is capable of achieving what studio-grade editing monitors are made for. This display can even reach a peak brightness of 1600 nits with HDR content, but normally it would stay at 500 nits for standard content. It also has ProMotion, which gives you that silky smooth 120Hz refresh rate, which is just beautiful. Scrolling, shifting windows, and editing looks twice as smooth thanks to the 120Hz refresh rate. Going back to a 60Hz laptop display just isn't the same after using a 120Hz display. The 
biggest improvement that came with Apple switching to their own in-house Apple silicon chips are the battery life. Using highly efficient cores, the SIP power has allowed Apple to maximize the battery life from a battery that is basically the same size from the last generation. The battery life on the 14-inch MacBook Pro is amazing, lasting up to 17 hours as Apple claims. For me, I get up to 10 hours depending on the work I do during the day, which is plenty enough for me. I never bring a charger with me and I don't actually bother trying to save battery life at all. I keep all my tabs open, keep the brightness up and use all my heavy applications. It lasts the whole day with no problem. In conclusion, the 14-inch MacBook Pro fits all the criteria for being the best laptop. At $2,000, the 14-inch MacBook Pro excels in every category more than any other laptop in its bracket. It combines ultra-fast performance, a beautiful display, and a long-lasting battery into one sleek and clean design. And that is why I think Apple nailed it with the 14-inch MacBook Pro. After one year, I don't think there are any flaws with this machine for what it's worth and what it's for. Especially when this MacBook goes on discount often. I can't recommend people to buy it more. That's it for this one year review and I'll see you in the next video.